Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in 2016, the GTX 1060 launched in two variations, the 3GB and the 6GB model. Aside from the differences in VRAM, we also had the difference in price. Here in the UK, I think the 6GB card went for £240 and the 3GB card £190. And at the time, I said it was a good choice if you were on a much stricter budget. I in fact used a 3GB GTX 1060 for quite a long time time. Today I want to see how these two compare with some modern and demanding titles just to see what we can expect from the differences in VRAM and of course the reduced core count as well. The 3 gig card has 1152 CUDA cores and the 6 gig version has 1280. But let's get into it. This is going to be a short video because you're probably sick of the sight of the GTX 1060 by now. I mean the last two videos featured a 6 gig card anyway but let's see how the regular 1060 as some may refer to it and the so-called cut down 1060 compare in 2024. Now traditionally the 1060 has a single 6 pin connector, I'm using the Gigabyte G1 version of the 6 gig card which has an 8 pin connector and the MSI 3 gig version which has the traditional 6 pin setup. But let's get into Alan Wake 2, our first game, 1080p with the lowest settings. For the 3 gig 1060 we saw 25 FPS on average, a 1% low of 20 and a 0.1% low of 12. The 6 gig card hit 32 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 27 and a 0.1% low of 25. So in my opinion this is the difference between not quite playable and just about playable because the 6 gig card is pushing us over that 30 FPS threshold. I think this is the bare minimum for these slower paced third person titles, especially if you have a more entry level GPU. Starfield up next, this is the only other game tested which doesn't have a traditional benchmark run so I took a walk around New Atlantis here, 1080p with the lowest settings. You're probably familiar with the results if you saw yesterday's video of the 6 gig 1060 so let's read through the 3 gig cards results first. Now this scored an average of 31 FPS which was quite surprising. The first time I fired this game up I didn't think it was actually going to run but it did. Alan Wake 2 I should have said did give us a warning that 3 gigabytes of VRAM wasn't quite enough and it did prove correct. Starfield started without problems. 31 FPS on average, a 1% of 26 and a 0.1% of 25. We saw 5 FPS more on the 6 gig version uh, at 36 fps on average a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 22. Next up we'll run through the Black Myth benchmark 1080p with a low preset the 1063 gig is hitting 25 fps on average with a 1% low of 18 and a 0.1% low of 17. The in-game overlay was pretty much red the entire time I think basically telling me that this is not a playable result. For the 6 gig card we saw 35 so 10 frames more on average with significantly improved percentile lows as well. The thing is you're going to be limited to low or medium settings at a push in 2024 with either version of the card and in some cases there's going to be a significant difference between the frame rates and in others not so much. It all depends on whether or not the game considers VRAM or the lack of it the most important aspect of the GPU. All games are different, of course. We'll run through the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark now, 1080p with the balanced preset. Of course, we are using 100% resolution scaling for all of these results. So if FSR or any other form of upscaling should turn on by default with any of these presets, well, I was sure to turn it off. The 3 gigabyte 1060 hit 50 FPS on average with a 1% low of 32 and a 0.1% low of 28. The 1066 gig hit 54 FPS on average with a 1% low of 32 once again and a 0.1% low of 27. So not much difference here at all, but this is a slightly older game. So so that could be why or it may just be that with this preset both cards are handling it just fine not quite 60 fps but almost cyberpunk 2077 with the low preset and the medium textures which could prove detrimental to the three gigabyte card it didn't have a huge impact on the performance we saw 42 fps on average with a one percent low of 29 and a point one percent low of 24 the 1066 gig pulled ahead with 48 fps and improved one percent figure of 34 and the percentile figure the point one percent low here was basically the same 24 FPS so yeah not much difference in terms of the percentile numbers once again but there is definitely a clear winner in terms of the average six frames per second more on this six gigabyte card though there are going to be problems in game for both versions. 
As we move on to Forza Horizon 5, I'd just like to say that the 3 gigabyte 1060 is actually holding up pretty well considering I tested it about a year ago and said the same thing, especially when you think about the price that you can buy this at. Now I know it's quite close to the 6 gig card, so you may as well just go for that in a lot of instances these days. It's not quite the £50 gap in price that it used to be because you're not going to be paying much more than £50 for either of these two, perhaps not even that much for the 3 gig iteration. But Forza Horizon 5, 52 FPS with the 3 gig card, a 1% low of 42 and a 0.1% low of 32. A nice neat set of figures there. 63 frames per second for the 6 gigabyte GPU, a 1% low of 51 and a 0.1% low of 32. So the 0.1% figure was the same again, but those Average and 1% numbers were much improved on the more VRAM rich card. We'll finalise then with Red Dead Redemption 2 1080p with the Xbox One equivalent settings. Now neither of these is good for 60fps here but with the 3 gig card we saw 54, a 1% lower 41 and a 0.1% lower 31. The 6 gig 1060 hit 57 so 3fps more. An improved 1% number by about 5fps, 46 this time around. And for the 0.1% lows, we saw the same figure of 31. Overall, though, I think it's a solid effort for the 3GB 1060 in 2024. In fact, I'm just going to look up quickly while I'm talking to you here how much you can expect to pay for a 3GB card. Just looking at the first few listings. Well, so we're looking at less than £50 for a couple of buy it now ones here in the UK, £48 there, £60. I'd say £60 is about the average based on this listing, between £60 and £70. And if you want to pay for a 6 gigabyte card, which is going to do you slightly better, or quite a bit better, depending on the title, then you're looking at between sort of 60 and 80 So, I mean, yeah, you're not talking... A lot of money 20 30 pounds difference really um, not as much as it used to be of course but i think now you're better off going with that in fact if i type in a gtx 1070 bearing in mind i am basing all of this on uk prices so it's worth looking it up yourselves then yeah there's a 1070 here for 90 pounds so there's a really small gap now between the 1066 gig and the 1070 which comes with 8 gig i might do a 1060 versus 1070 versus 1080 comparison actually in 2024 to see just what the difference is in performance because the price difference is certainly very small but thanks for watching this one i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope it's helpful i wouldn't recommend the 3 gig 1060 if you want to play the most modern games out there with closer to 60 fps but then again the 6 gig card can't really do that either unless you want to implement some form of upscaling. Let me know your thoughts down below and hopefully I'll see you next time.